Now Show. Celebrities, pop culture, and comedy. What's going on? It's Michael Yo. Welcome to the Michael Yo Show. We are always trying to enlighten you in different ways from comedy, celebrities, and also health and fitness. And today we have Dylan Shank live inside the studio, CEO of Lift Society. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. Okay. Thanks for having me. All right. Okay. So the reason why I'm bringing you in, of course, if you're watching people, we're going to talk about uh, what ladies can do to get that J-Lo or Beyonce butt or whoever's butt everybody wants now. We're going to talk about that. Five things you can do to keep yourself healthy for guys and girls. We'll talk about that. But I want to know your story. How'd you get into fitness? I got into fitness super young. Um, my dad and my stepmom, they owned a Pilates studio like in the 90s before Pilates was like what it is now. And um, it was basically them and like Mari Windsor at the time. And so it's cool. They were like the, one of the first people in the Pilates space. And How was what's the difference between Pilates back then and Pilates now? Um, it was like very underground, like you there wasn't a Pilates studio on every corner. It was like you really had to go searching for it. It was like you heard of someone who knew about Pilates and like literally no one even knew what it was. And so it was very, very authentic and very like there's like real Pilates, I guess. We okay, so say. so because yeah. now I see Pilates with a transformer. I see different it's everywhere. things. Everywhere, yeah. It's, and, and people use different things in different yeah. Pilates classes. Yeah. What is real Pilates? Well, so what what you're talking about is all of these like celebrity trainers who have created their own method with their own branding and their own equipment that is basically like a shoot off off of what Joseph Pilates created Pilates to be. And so in the original like Pilates repertoire, there's only like 60 exercises. So that would be what we would consider to be like real Pilates. And no transformer. So it's, the, a, it's actually called a reformer. A reformer. See, I don't even know. <laughs> I, a transformer is a movie, yo. You know, it has Decepticons, Autobots. You see, this is how much I know about Pilates. I'm like transformer. More than meets the eye. Yes. Okay, so a reformer. A reformer. So in your Pilates, real Pilates, is there a reformer? Yes. So there there's, is? Okay. There's basically three main apparatus. So you have the uh, Pilates reformer, you have something called the Cadillac, and then you have the Wunder chair or Wunder chair. He was German. So Okay, so so what, what okay, because what Lift Society, I started mm -hmm. going to Lift Society. Yep. Uh, you use a lot you use weights. Yep. Of course you use what you can handle, but it's more uh a weight based. Totally. You know, yep. where Pilates is more body weight yes. based. There's a little bit of resistance with Pilates, but it's mainly body weight. So so what are you gonna get from the different like, if I went to Lift Society, I will look how. If I went to just Pilates, I will look how. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, well, thank you. Hey, <laughs> I'm killing it over here. Okay. So Pilates, I love. I find that mentally it's very transformative. There's a basic, like, breath focus that you have to, like, really be connected with your body. It's great for, like, building body awareness. And you will get, like... A baseline of strength obviously core strength is like the main emphasis with Pilates um, but in terms of like building muscle you're not in order to build muscle you have to break your body down that soreness that you experience when you're lifting heavy weights that's what breaks your muscles down and ultimately builds them back up right your body goes through that that process of rebuilding so Pilates does not have that the goal of Pilates is to not break your body down whereas the goal with lifting weights is to break your body down but People, so like I'm saying, if I went into, like me, let's talk yep. about me since okay. our audience knows me. If I went and just did Pilates, mm -hmm. how would I look physically? Okay, so if you didn't change your diet or anything, you would probably burn a couple hundred calories a session. You would have a, a progression, a slow progression of strength over a year, and you would look a little more like lean and a little more toned if you went very consistently Four or five days a week. Okay, but would I be, I guess, more flexible? Yes. I would, you would be, be more, more fle flexible. Okay, gotcha. You'd be more flexible. You'd have more core strength. The body composition is not going to change that much off of only doing Pilates. Okay, so Trevor Pinnick from O-Town is one mm -hmm. of my friends. Yeah. And, of course, he goes to Lift Society, introduced me to Lift Society. Yeah. I love him so much. Now, Trevor, I've seen before he started Lift Society. Yeah. And now he <laughs> looks like a weightlifter. Every like, time I see him, I'm like, are you bigger today? Yeah. You're bigger today. <laughs> it, see, okay, so here's my problem yeah. is that, and, and Trevor, I can't work out with him anymore because he's too aggressive. <laughs> he tries to put too much weight on. I'm like, dude. <laughs> 
I'm just here for the first time. I want to chill out. No, man, you got to put this on. You got to put yeah. this on. He's so very my, enthusiastic. Yes, very enthusiastic. <laughs> Great guy. So my thing is, I started coming to you guys, but I don't want to look like Trevor. I don't yeah. want to get bigger because once I get big, it's like I swell up. Yeah. You know, I just want to stay lean. Can a person go to Lift Society and achieve that? I'm on TV looking, don't need to be really big. For sure. So that's where it comes in with like diet, supplements. Um, people are like really getting into like, gosh, there's so much science now behind everything that goes into like your sleep and your food and all of that that goes into like what you actually look like in the end period. So for someone like yourself who doesn't want to get like huge, you're going to be a little bit more moderate with your weights. Uh, you're probably not going to train as many days a week. You're going to have more rest days. And, um, yeah, just really kind of ease into it, especially since, you know, you have that athletic background, but you're just getting back into so, weight training. So what you're saying is a person like me can't go, like if I wanted to be lean, mm-hmm. but want to be active every day, mm-hmm. I, I shouldn't go to lift society every day. I should more like on the off days kind of run on a treadmill or do something. Not like- necessarily. It, it really depends on your genetics. So like if your genetics are, there are people who are just big and stocky and yeah. those people are going to bulk up a lot faster. However, if you're not putting the calories in, you don't have those calories to grow, right? So, for people who are trying to get bigger, which we do have those people that come oh, yeah. in, it's like you need to just eat eat whatever you want, eat all the time, <laughs> like yeah. especially like these lean guys that have never been able to put on muscle. Their program is train every day eat whatever you want and they'll get bigger, right? For someone like yourself, it would be like, all right, let's keep your calories moderate, probably not change your diet that much and just get you on like a three to four day a week lifting routine. So how many calories do you guesstimate you would burn in your class? If you had to guess, and I know this is pure, everybody loses, I mean, (laughs) calories are different, but what would I guess? I would guess somewhere between 500 to 800. Okay. Um, This is the cool thing with lifting though, and I'm kind of glad you brought it up. So things like cardio based or Pilates or yoga or almost everything except for lifting weights, spin classes, everything like that. You are burning way more calories per hour than you are with lifting. The difference is when you're done with that workout, you stop burning calories, you're done, Mm. right? With lifting weights, you're burning, let's say, let's say you burn a thousand calories in a spin class. Okay. Okay. As soon as you're done with that spin class, you're done burning calories. When you lift weights, let's say you burn 500 to 800, right? That's a little bit less. Yeah. But there's something called EPOC, which is known as the afterburn effect, where your body is regenerating itself, building that muscle. It's raising your overall metabolism, and that's where you see more calories burned over time. So you're actually burning calories within 24, 48-hour period, more so than that one hour in that spin class that you did. And sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 no. This is great stuff. Yeah. So as you're building more muscle, increasing your metabolism, your body is burning more calories overall. So it raises your resting metabolic rate. So that's what we all want, right? We want to have a little bit more freedom with our diets. You want to be able to go out on that Friday night, not freak out that you overate one day. And so lifting weights actually kind of gives you more freedom to like live your best life because Okay, because you're burning more. you're, You're burning more calories over time and increasing your metabolism overall. No matter what age you are, it increases your It will definitely increase your metabolism. Okay, so now I heard, like, especially legs, because I'm debating on this glute day. (laughs) They do this glute day for the women that want nice glutes and butts and things like that. Is that a good class for men? It's amazing. We basically, it's leg day. It's leg day. So you're going to hit your quads, you're going to hit your glutes, you're going to hit your hamstrings, and especially when it comes to burning fat, building your metabolism, you have to go hard on your legs. Um, just doing cardio and things like that is just not, it's not enough. So even if you don't really care about having like a sculpted booty, although I will say guys are kind of getting into it now. Like even, Sculpted booties? Yes. So there's I used been to have a butt. tons of research about how everyone used to think that your quads were like your biggest, strongest leg muscle. And now we've actually found out it's actually your glutes. So your glutes can handle like so much load. And so now like even like just regular guys are coming in. They're like, I just want like thick legs. I'm like, all right, cool. We can help you with okay, that. See, like, I, I don't want thick legs though. See, right. I guess that, but I, I like everything I want lean yeah. because I've already been big before. Yeah. And I really don't work out my legs at all. Yeah. Like I, there will, I won't, there will be no judging if I come in and just do the bar. Like no, start. No, no, okay. No, no. All no. right. I mean, that's the other thing. So I live society. You're in charge of all your own weights. There's no prescribed weights. Okay. It's like, all how you are feeling. Mm-hmm. Also, too, like I said, if you're not putting the calories in, you're not going to be able to get bigger, right? Like, I'm sure when you were in college, you were eating. 
everything. Yeah, exactly. I was eating six times a day. I was two sixty in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah see, I'm but massive. you're putting the calories in, so you're able to get bigger, right? If you're not putting the calories in, you're going to end up burning fat, so you are going to get leaner, mm-hmm. and then you are going to have that muscle definition. So okay. you can kind of play around with what you want your body to look like. Okay, so what about like I, I talk to a lot of women. Uh, we have a lot of women come in. A lot of them don't lift weights because they like well, I don't want to look big. Right. You know how can someone lift weight? How can a woman? This is for a question for the women yep. that have asked this. How can they lift weights without looking like, hey, I lift weights? Right. So first of all, women don't have nearly the amount of testosterone that men have. So it's like really, really, really hard for women to like get big. I think especially when you see like a lot of female trainers, you see big bulky muscles but that's because we're trainers right like we're into that that's the look we're going for and like we've been working on it for like 10 years yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is what you do yeah this is what we do and it's like the look that we're like attempting to have right so you have to like really put a lot of like work and effort into it um i think the average woman that comes in wants tight lean muscles and a lower body fat percentage and that is 100 percent what lifting does for women across the board doesn't matter. It's actually the only way I got back into shape after having both my kids. Really? Yeah. So let's talk about that. When yeah. uh, a woman comes in, in a man, when they, how fast of the effects from lifting doing these classes do you see it? Because I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get buff and stuff over here, but lean. Oh, okay, this is actually one of the things that I feel like people always do wrong in fitness. Okay. Where it's like day one, and they're like, "All right, how much longer till I'm in shape?" I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that guy. I know how it works. It's not me at all. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, it depends on consistency. So usually, I'll tell people like, "Let's talk in a month. Let me see what you do this month, and that's going to show me what you're going to look like over the next year." Because if you come once a week, you know. It's going to take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so you, once a week, a long time. Once a week equals long time, people. Correct. So a good regimen is somebody to come in three to four times a week. That's solid, right? I say if people are just getting into lifting, three to four days a week is perfect. Okay. Um, we run what we call like an upper lower split. So if you get two lower body classes, two upper body classes, maybe sub in a cardio or something like that one day a week, that is usually good. Um, we do have a lot of new lifters that come in. We also have people who do their own thing at the gym and they just want more structure. So that's like another person that comes in. And then we get a lot of people that like leave CrossFit where they still want to lift heavy, but they just don't feel like doing CrossFit anymore. So it's okay. Let's talk about CrossFit. I I have a lot of doctor friends Yeah, and they go, dude, people killing themselves in CrossFit. They're being too competitive. The egos come out. Every I get more CrossFit injuries in right. my office than anything else. Yeah. What is the why is that first of all in CrossFit and why is it so different than what you do? Because you're lifting weights as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe not in the same way because I've never been to CrossFit, so I don't know. Okay, so, so CrossFit every workout is competition, right? So. You're basically putting people in their 30s, 40s, 50s into an athletic training environment. So probably not the CrossFit, best idea. It, can we can we say CrossFit is for real athletes? Cro- like, well, yeah. like pretty much like you got to be really athletic to do it. I would say if you're under 30, go for it. Okay. <laughs> like mm-hmm. if you want to be competitive in something, you're not playing college sports and you're like really wanting something athletic to be competitive in. Cool. Go okay. do CrossFit. Like, fine, whatever. Over the age of 30, there's really no reason for someone to be doing CrossFit, especially not if they have like physique goals. Like, I want to, whatever it is, like you can achieve physique goals by lifting weights without doing CrossFit. And actually, I found that people are like, I don't even really like CrossFit. I just even know, don't even know what else to do. And I've just been doing it for so long that. I just keep doing it <laughs> because most people, most people, I would imagine like the classes I've seen, this is the first your lift society is the first weightlifting class mm-hmm. I've ever been to where it's like not you running up and down. Like, like a lot of people go to cardio, like classes where they all get together and what's different from F45. And then you have uh, this training mate thing for to me, because I've been to both and yep. I've been to years, what I love is I feel way stronger leaving yours yep. than those two. And I'm not dogging. If that's your thing, that's your thing. There's no competition over here. But to me, I enjoy feeling it more when I walk out. Yep. And I feel like I've done something rather than I did a lot of stuff. Right. And I think I feel it. 
And, right. You know, I sweat it, but I, I don't know where I feel like as soon as I walked out of the first two classes, I'm like, OK, I feel this and I know exactly where it's going to help me. Yeah. Out. So I would say the difference would be going to a place that provides programming versus a place that provides classes. Right? Got you. So we're members only gym. We run a six week training cycle. We are so nerdy about the exercises and the rep schemes and the cycles and every six weeks those are switched out so you need to have repetitiveness you need to get better at your main lifts so if you only squat twice a month because it's boring to squat or we squatted yesterday or you know whatever like these like hit training places like you do it one time and then you move on to something else so it's like yeah you're sweating but like are you really breaking your body down changing your body composition getting better at something building muscle no like you have to be on a program. And so I think that is the main difference. So now, it's, now yeah. when you say you're on a program, right. what's that mean? So if I come in, like I went in today, Correct. I did, what did I do? I did you the did cardio, cardio one. Yep. So if I went to like flex, yep. that's where you, it's upper body. I did last week flex in uh, with Trevor. Yep. I, well, yeah, it was last on week. Sunday. On a Sunday. So that was 12 reps. This week or next week, it'll be what reps? Is it the same workout flex? So we do two weeks at 12 reps. Okay. Two weeks at 10 reps, two weeks at eight reps, and then it restarts. Every time the cycle restarts, there's new exercises. So the way that we kind of format it, you don't want to do the same workout every Mm -hmm. time you come in, obviously, but you need to have consistency, but then you also need to have variety. So it's like, how do we have both of those things? Whereas I feel like a lot of CrossFit, especially their whole thing is having variety, right? Constantly varied fitness. Um, which is kind of like goes along with muscle confusion. So it's like, you know, we've been like conditioned to think like, okay, I need muscle confusion. I need varied exercises. Like I can never do the same thing twice. Now I'm bored. Now I got strobe lights going (laughs) and like all these things to like distract us from what, like what we're actually doing. Whereas like, if you look at something that's like a skill that needs to be developed, well, yeah, like I want to get better at my squats. I want to get better at my bench press. Yeah. I want to be able to do a pull up. These are all things that are like things that you can focus on technique wise, strength wise, constantly getting better at, but then are also like giving you the physical attributes that you're looking for as well. What if you have hurt body parts? How should people approach going, not just your, your place, but different places like say, cause I know I got, you know, my shoulders a little messed up. My left knee is a little messed up. How do you approach that when you're trying to get in shape? Um, I would say, 100% you have to tell the trainer. Um, I'm still surprised at the amount of people that are like, oh, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. But it's like, you're going to have such a better experience overall. You're going to have longer, like a better longevity of whatever program it is you're doing. And then also like be smart. If something's hurting, like don't work through it. Let's like take a break, do something else. Everything can always be subbed out as long as the trainer knows ahead of time. And there's a conversation that's going on. But in CrossFit, it it would put you in a position where even if it hurts, I, I have to push through it and get more yeah. reps than this dude beside me. Right. So okay. you, there's the prescribed workout of the day. Okay. Yeah. So so for people listening, like ladies that want to get in shape, uh, what's a good diet? You know, because there's so many fads, right? right. There's keto. There's, there. I, I can't even name them. There's so many this different so diets. Many, yeah. What does it really come down to, to you? So are we talking fat loss? Yes. For, so fat loss. for people to okay. lean up. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing that matters, not the only, the main thing that matters is calorie deficit. However, you want to create that calorie deficit, whether it's plant based, keto, paleo, whatever it is, they're all based on having a calorie deficit. So you need to know a general idea of what your resting metabolic rate is, right? So that's the amount of calories that you burn just being alive. And how do you, and how then, would you find that out? So you can do a body fat scan um, for people who don't want to do that. What I have people do, we actually do like nutritional coaching as well. We run like these women's strength camps, which get like really into like tons of hand holding. It's designed for women who've they're a little nervous and like, yeah, I got they, it like really, it puts them all in a group together and we're like doing it together. So it's really oh, fun. That's cool. Um, so that's really fun. But what I have those people do is we track their food for like three days in like an app. And then that'll kind of give us a baseline of like, okay, this is where you're able to eat and maintain whatever body composition you have. Now it's like, okay, let's take away 300 calories a day. Let's do this. Let's do that. Maybe your protein's super low. We need to get the protein up higher. I would say like most women that I work with, their protein is like, insanely low and then they're usually a little too high on carbs or fat so it's like just switching out that macro what's your take on intermittent fasting 
I like it for some people. It does mm. not work for me. I like get really fat on intermittent fasting. What? How does it? <laughs> not fat. I shouldn't say fat. My body retains water. So especially because I work out in the morning. So it's like now I'm doing like a fasted workout at like 9 a.m. Then I'm like drinking tons of water. And then by the time I actually eat at like 11 or 12, I've gained like five or six pounds because <laughs> my body's just freaking out that it uh-huh. hasn't had anything. It's like, when are you going to feed me? So um, for me, it doesn't work. I find that it works a lot really well for guys just kind of what I've seen come through the gym I know a couple women who do it also but um I think it's great for the right person okay yeah. okay now when people come into your gym because you also do personal training too when mm-hmm. people come in are there certain body parts of celebrities where they'll mention like oh I want this from this celebrity want this from this celebrity for sure and- <laughs> and and how do, for sure and and how do you approach that with them? Um, well, so there's always a the conversation, right? The cool thing about lifting is you really can like build your body to look the way that you want it to look. If you want to get bigger with lifting, you can get bigger. If you want to get smaller, we can get you smaller. That's where it comes down to your calories, right? But if you want to grow certain body parts, obviously <laughs> we focus more on that area. We have a girl that comes in for personal training three to four days a week. She doesn't want to take classes because she only wants to build her glutes. And our glute classes also involve quads and like. So yeah. glutes would be butt. Glutes would be, yeah, the booty. Yeah. And, and so, whose booty would she, does she like? Everyone wants the Kim K booty. Kim Kardashian <laughs> booty. How can a woman at home right now going, you know what? I want a bigger butt. Yep. I want a nice toned butt. Yep. What, what's a, give me like uh, two things they can do. You have to start lifting. You have to. And not five pound weights. Like heavy, like heavy weights. Especially if you want to build you have to go heavy. You really have to tax the But muscles. can you really build your butt you can. bigger? I've you can. It. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so your butt, your butt, explain the butt to me. It's just not fat. But it's actually muscle it back muscle. there. Yep. And that muscle will expand to make your butt look better. For sure. Huh. So you can actually, there's like multiple, there's like your glute max, there's your glute meat, and they build differently kind of depending. So a lot of this goes back to like old school bodybuilding. Like, Gosh, like you just look at some of these, like it's crazy. So yeah, you really okay, can. So, so yeah. So how do you do it? So give well, me a couple of exercises. There's a couple different things. So basically, it's not just your glutes because you don't want. Well, a lot of people want like a big butt and like lean legs. That's kind of like the thing. Other people do want like bigger glutes and thicker legs. So that, of course, like I said, is going to come down to like diet and nutrition as well. But we're really talking about like the hamstrings, the glute med. And the glute max. Okay. So like hands down, hip thrusts, number one. Hip thrusts. And that's where you lay on your back, yep. put your arms down beside you, and kind of just thrust up. Okay. So that would be a glute bridge if you're lying oh, on the bridge. floor. Okay. Yep. So hip thrust, your shoulders are actually like elevated on a bench. You have some kind of barbell or weight on your hip, and then your hips are going down and up. So you get a bigger range of motion. So you can go really far down because you're elevated up on that um, that bench, and then go all the way up. So, but you're pushing, and that's helping your butt by pushing? Yes. Huh. Yeah, you're going to experience it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yay. Class. That's fun. Yeah. I have a feeling my legs are just going to lock up on me and be like, nah, you never work out your legs. You, you got chicken legs. What are you doing? Stop you're gonna it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> okay, so what is that called again? It's called a hip thrust. A hip thrust. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what, what else could I do? I mean, you have your squats, lunges, hip thrusts, sumo deadlift. Sumo deadlift. Sumo deadlift. That's another good one. What is that? Sumo deadlift. So you know the traditional deadlift. Feet yeah. right under your hips, standing up with the bars. Oh, okay. Sumo deadlift. Your feet are like wide in a sumo stance with your knees pushing out. So it's going to just activate your glutes even more. It's also more of a leg drive, whereas the deadlift is a lot of back extension as well. Sumo deadlifts is a little bit more legs and glutes than Okay, so when somebody lifts weights, yep. like at, how can they not hurt themselves? Because when you're lifting weights, that's when a lot of things can go wrong. Too. Right. So I would say we have something called ego lifting. <laughs> have oh, you heard what? of ego no, lifting? No, no. Is that, is that where I'm trying to show off for people? I don't know what an ego is. <laughs> Michael Yo show. I uh, know. What is ego lifting? Ego I, lifting is where you just walk in and you just care about everyone else that's watching you and you just go ham. Lift as heavy as you can. <laughs> max everything yeah. out. And then you can't work out for two, three weeks afterwards because you're so destroyed from that one workout that you did. So that's ego lifting. So uh, yeah, I don't do I that. don't advise. Um, I think your approach is great. Starting off light. 
easing into it, kind of testing the waters yeah. a little bit, especially like because it's been a little bit since you've lifted. So like that, yeah. yeah. I do lift though sometimes, right? But, but <laughs> not not like that. But yeah. whatever. So I would say ease into it. The clients we see with the most longevity are the ones who are more cautious in the beginning, almost even overly cautious. Um, they have maybe some injuries, or they just really want to like take it slowly. Those are the people that hands on always last the longest. And so I would advise take it easy, focus on form. Don't try to be adding weights before you're ready for it. And like, if you don't know anything, hire a trainer, like okay. spend, you don't have to hire a trainer for the rest of your life, but it's like even getting 10 sessions with someone who's good, who knows what they're talking about. They should be able to teach you what you can do on your own. There should and, be a teaching and aspect. Don't work out with Trevor Pinnock from Motown because he's too <laughs> aggressive. Don't ever work out with oh him. Oh my gosh. He's don't actually ever. great. I love partnering up with Trevor. <laughs> well, you do, but not me. Like yeah. Trevor's trying to get big. I've already been yeah. where, like I was like twice the size of Trevor. I know. Like, I, like, I don't want to be big like that. He's like, come on, man, lift my weight. And I'm like, oh man, dude, this is my first day. <laughs> And I'm lifting like you. But anyway, yeah, I'm, not, right. I'm just saying. All right. So, uh, okay. So we covered the Kim Kardashian body parts. Yep. I want to, this is kind of side note. I want to get your take on cryo. Cryotherapy? Cryotherapy. I don't know about it. I'm not fully know? sold. Okay. Why not? I don't know. It just, is it? Is it? Because, I did it like once and I was like, nah, yeah. I just feel really cold. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the whole idea. <laughs> I know. They say it's like getting into a. Um, Have you done it? Yeah, yeah. You like it? It's miserable while I'm in there, yeah. but I do get a burst of energy. Right. I don't like. I hope it's helping. It's, yeah. They say it's like getting into ice, like like what you did when. Yeah, you were but a have kid. you done that? Yes, that's, that's miserable. That's way more torturous than yeah, sitting but in you, a cold because you got to be in there for three minutes. I mean, right. thirty minutes. Like, right. uh, I don't know. I like it because I get a burst of energy. Right. And I it's like don't, a cold shower or something. You could get that. Yeah. yeah. It just sparks something different yeah. in you. Okay. Yeah, she Dylan's personally. keeping a hardcore. No, I don't like it. <laughs> face. She's like, no on that. It's not my. Uh, not your thing. Not my thing. Uh, what is something that is your thing outside of lifting weights that you like to do? This is like the worst question ever because I do like no nothing. Nothing ever. Okay, okay. you just live. So yes, um, I have recently started going to like Yin Yoga, which I did not know what it was. Yin Yoga. I have been educated recently. Yin Yoga is now my favorite because I actually am not a huge yoga person either, but. If I'm going to go to yoga, it has to be like enjoyable. So yin yoga is you hold every, you only do like four stretches, like the entire time oh my God, yeah. and you hold each one for like five to seven minutes and, and then you're done. That's it. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can totally get, but do you, this. do you feel more flexible? Total. Well, yeah. If you hold a stretch for that long, for sure. Yeah. And usually they're heated. They're not, it depends on where you go, but where do you go for your yin yoga? So now you just, now I know the, the thing you can just Google it. There's like tons of yin yoga studio or like Stop yoga it. studios that offer yin yoga. Yeah. Four stretches, 28 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Or crazy. is that each side? So it's like, 50 so seconds. yeah, it's like, yeah, each side. So, so now you I... would do like a pigeon stretch for like five minutes on one side. Then you switch five minutes on the other side. I it's, am down for that. It's awesome. At my first class, I was like, this is like torture being in it. But then at the end, you just feel stretch insanely amazing. Yeah. Yin yoga. Yep. I love it. I yep. love it. All right. So beyond, um, so what Kim Kardashian's, but yep. what other body parts do people come in and ask for? I would say the general look is like tiny waist, big booty, and then like something big on top. So if the chest thing is not happening, oh. a little bigger shoulders, we want like that hour gla hourglass shape. And that's for women and men? Or that's is that? Women, sorry, women. women. Okay. Very hourglass. Guys want to come in, they want to be big on top, small waist, and some guys are into the booty. I don't know. What to say. Some guys are into the booty. <laughs> uh, now, uh, I like, they call it the Superman chest, where it's flatter, but it's, it's wider. Okay. Like, and I heard wide grip is best for that. Like, because I heard you can get two different. I don't know if this is true. I'm just throwing out. Is there such things when you're lifting as two different chests? Like, you can get one that kind of like pops out if you are like the normal barley. But if you do everything wider, it kind of flattens it out. And uh, it, it kind of. I think it's actually the opposite. So if you're oh. wider grip, that's going to get more chest development. If you're in more narrow grip, it's going to be more tricep and it like upper chest as well. Um, but okay. wider will definitely hit your chest a lot okay. more. Okay, a lot more. Yeah. 
And then mm. when it comes to chest development, I kind of think that's like a genetic thing. Like my husband, Dave, you met him. He does yeah. almost like no chest work and like has a very <laughs> developed chest where he actually kind of avoids doing extra chest work because, because he doesn't want to get bigger. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like we have other guys who come in that like really re- want to like build the chest. So it's like we do tons of stuff like that as well. So I think... Um, it depends on your training program. It depends on your body type, your genetics. Um, you can also go incline. You can go decline. Uh, you can do chest flies. Okay, so yeah. what, what's the? I know the difference between right. incline and decline, but what do right. I do differently? So it just hits the different pec muscles okay. differently, right? All right? So yeah, that's it. So, You're just so. Should you be doing all of them, or is bench like if you do bench, you cover everything? I mean, so there, it's actually kind of like a topic of conversation. Oh, okay. Uh, among the the- training scientific community um they used to think that you would have to train upper middle lower of like you know chest since we're talking about it but now they're kind of saying like it all works conclusively together so i don't know if there's a conclusive answer to that okay people kind of have different opinions on different things okay i yeah. like that i like that so how for women is it different for women and men uh because everybody wants a tiny waist mm-hmm. is it different for women and men to get that tiny waist or do they have they pretty much can do the same thing to achieve it yeah i mean that's going to just come down to your nutrition that's where most people hold their their body fat right so the lower your body fat percentage is the smaller the waist is going to be okay and basically it's more greens less carbohydrates is that pretty much the rule for i mean can we just yeah. say stop eating pizza and cupcakes and just eat <laughs> salads and chicken and that protein. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of flex dieting. Um, flex, dieting. flex dieting. Oh my God, please enlighten me. <laughs> so I love flex dieting. It's flexible as okay. the name implies. So like I said, calorie deficit. But that being said, you can create that calorie deficit. So for myself, I typically eat around 1500 calories a day. That, that sounds so low. It is on the lower end. So I have kind of a slow metabolism. Okay. Um, I have friends that eat like 3,000 calories a day that like... And how did you discover you have a slow metabolism? So I did, like I had a doctor that was kind of working with me on like, I had like a bunch of like hormone issues like okay, after gotcha. my pregnancy. Okay. And so we were like really working on like, I actually went through like a two year period where I could not lose any fat at all. And I was like doing all the right things and oh like, my goodness. yeah, it was a terrible terrible time because I'm a trainer obviously (laughs) you're like this does not look good (laughs) this is like the worst job for me right now (laughs) I'm like supposed to be training you and I can't train myself right now so that was like a crazy path that I went down but um yeah I basically figured out what my resting metabolic rate was based off that I actually did like some hormone replacement for a while because that ended up being my like main issue was like gotcha. after pregnancy my like nothing went back to normal so it was like all my hormones were just like woo going crazy so we got all of that regulated then we got my like calories down low enough that I could like maintain but then also like still have energy to like get through my day so 1500 is like my magic number okay so 1500 tell me what you'll eat in a 1500 calorie day because I can't even it's not very much (laughs) what is it one egg and a couple carrot sticks okay so wait let's talk about macros first so I make sure I have at least 100 grams of protein a day okay I think that's kind of minimum for most adults. now do you get it from real meat or do you get it from shakes uh both okay yeah I definitely supplement um and then my carbs are like 150 grams ish like 100 to 150 grams which is considered to be like a low carb diet and then uh, my fats are somewhere around like 50 or 60 grams a day so I'm like one of those people that I can just eat the same thing every day for the rest of my See, life. See, I'm a and robot too. Yeah, I can it do doesn't that. bother me. So basically breakfast is like Greek yogurt. I mix in like almond butter and honey and that's like everyday breakfast. But it has tons of protein. It has fats. The honey has like carbs also. So that's usually what I eat like right after my workout. Um, it has like 25 grams of protein, which is like. So you'll right work after. out on an empty stomach and then eat after. I'll eat like right after. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. You just like I'll have coffee in the morning. So you can out. get through one of your workouts without eating? Yeah. Okay, I got to try that. Yeah, I, I'm just used to it at this All point. All right, I got you. <laughs> and I heard it's best to actually do this on an empty stomach. Yeah, because so. you burn more fat. Is that the reason why? So yeah, I mean, doing like fasted, fasted yeah. cardio, fasted workouts. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you, it, supposedly you're burning nothing but fat. 
That's what they say. That's what they say, but it's not proven. I don't know. It's not proven. There's a lot of back. It's kind of one of those things, too. There's a lot of back and forth on it. There's a lot of things going on right now, Michael. (laughs) Because I also hear the other side where, no, you should eat something to get your metabolism going. So when you go in to work out, you you have some energy, your strength, or whatever. That's why people are so confused. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confused right now. (laughs) All right. So, okay. Go ahead. So calories. So basically, yogurt, Greek yogurt, unsweetened, non-fat. It's like very low calorie. Then I add my almond butter, add my honey. That's usually right after my workout. Sometime after that, I'm usually still at work. I'm training and doing admin stuff. Um, I'll have like a protein shake, and that's just like a plant-based protein, almond milk in a shaker bottle. Plant-based protein. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there, because my body can't take milk. Yeah, Anything like that. So I got to stay away from the whey protein. But plant-based, has it caught up to whey? Where has it caught up to whey? It's definitely more popular than it was even a couple years ago. Yeah, but is it, do you get the same thing? The same. Okay, so protein is protein. It yeah. doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. No matter if it's from plants or milk or whatever. Yeah, correct. Okay, got yeah. you. Well, actually, it's funny because I had this conversation the other day. They're like, oh, we have this client. She needs to like gain weight or whatever. And they're like, but she wants to gain weight, healthy weight. And I was like, wait, she wants to like gain fat. And they were like, yeah, but healthy fat. And I was just like. There's no healthy fat. Fat is fat. Like, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter so, if you get it from is, cheeseburgers or too much healthy food. Like, like this is plant-based <laughs> fat. So. <Yes. laughs> Plant based, exactly. So it's healthy fat. 100%. Okay, yeah. so you'll do the yogurt, the almond butter, honey, you'll do a shake, and then what's for yeah. dinner? Dinner is like up in the air. So that's kind of like my one meal where I have variety. So I have my consistency in the morning, I have my variety at night, um, like our training program. But um, yeah, so that will be anything from like chicken, veggies, broccoli. That's like where I get all my veggies for the day. I'm usually home for dinner, so that's like where I'm actually okay. like cooking, whereas like breakfast and lunch is more like I'm out, I'm at the gym, I'm on the go. Um, if I'm really hungry, I'll throw in like a protein bar or something like that. But um, yeah, okay. that's uh, my go-to. Uh, before you get out of here, give me a couple mistakes people okay. make, men and women, and yep. maybe the mistakes are the same or they could be different. Uh, mistakes they make like working out, going into a gym. Yeah. I would say like the number one mistake is just not even knowing why they're doing the workout that they're doing. It has nothing to do with their goals. It's not going to get them from point A to point B and they're just doing it because their friend goes or it's near their house or it's convenient or they saw it on some TV show and that's just, it's just not helping them. And and they really don't know what part of their body want to get better either. I would imagine. It's just there's, yeah. And it happens all the time. Like we'll have people come in. Like, I just really want to get strong. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? They're like, Orange Theory. I'm like, so you're running. <laughs> That's not going to get you stronger. Yeah. Like, like, how long have you been running for? And they're like, three years. I haven't gotten any stronger. I'm like, well, duh, you're doing the wrong training program. Like, yeah. But that happens all the time. So it's like people also need to like research and educate. And I think the science is coming out more and more when it comes to like lifting weights. More women are getting into it. It really is kind of recycling. People are kind of getting away from HIIT training. Um, I think HIIT training is just too much on the body. It's too much jumping and pounding on the joints. Um, So yeah, so I think if you are training for what your physical goals are, that would be a great step okay. in the right and, direction. And women and men make that mistake. Yes, okay. everyone does. Yep. All right, mm-hmm. good deal. How can people find you and how can people find Lift Society? So Lift Society. <laughs> so I hear we're hard to find. We are members only gym. <laughs> okay, all right. So it is one of those Maybe they things. make it hard to find we, on purpose. We do, actually. Okay. So the first two years we were open, we didn't even have a sign out front. It was like <laughs> a speakeasy. You had to know someone to, yeah, like, to get, get in. in. We've opened our horizon since then. Um, but yeah, basically you apply online. Uh, you fill out like a membership application. We contact you. We have you come in. We do a consultation. We make sure that your goals line up with our program, right? So that needs to be the first yeah. step, kind of like I said. And then uh, we do something called an intro month, which is basically one month where people can come in and try it out. Uh, we don't allow any drop-ins. So kind of like what we were talking about earlier, yeah. it's like it really has, um, when people are there, they're committed to their goals specifically and, and to the program. And what I love is, as far as like, I've only been twice, but like everybody's really friendly because I, I feel like they know they're going to see you the next day. For so sure. they can't be an ass. So they're like, if I'm going to ask this guy, he, he's going to he's going to see me every day yep. at this time. Yeah, there's a little more accountability there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more accountability. Yeah. Uh, so... So should people like, how do they find it though? Or yeah. should they so not find Instagram. it? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't you know if this is a it. secret or is it not a secret? <laughs> I like, I was, 
Okay, so yes. you can find her on Instagram. So we're on Instagram, uh, website, obviously. At it's, Lift Society. It's lift-society.com. Okay. And then Instagram is at Lift Society. Perfect. All the info is on there. They can just fill it out and we'll contact you. All right. Thank you so much for stopping yeah, by. of course. Thanks for having me. All right. You bet. And make sure you follow, subscribe, leave a comment, give it five stars. We really love your support. The show's been taking off and it's all about you and we appreciate you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>